Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our live cast on Inclusive Cities. My name is Elsa Marie Dasilva, and I'm the founder and CEO of Red Dot Foundation. Um, as you know, we've been hosting the series every week, every Wednesday uh, from the time we started. And actually, our guest was one of the last people we saw in person before uh, we went into lockdown mode. So um, we are very thrilled to have him here. But I'm going to hand it over to Pratima to introduce him. Over to you, Pratima. Thank you. Thank you, Elsa, and uh, welcome to the Inclusive Cities Livecast, which we've been hosting throughout this yeah. lockdown as part of our quarantine experiment. And um, yeah, it's been um, it's been really fun, and I'm so excited today to have uh, one of my favorite artists here in India, and is an evangelist to artists as well, Hanif Qureshi, um, who's been extensively working on street art and typography art. Uh, he's the artistic director and co-founder of Street Art India Foundation, which aims to make art more accessible to a larger audience in India through a series of street art festival. And you would have probably seen um, amazing examples of that in your own city, because uh, some really large scale uh, art, whether in Chennai or uh, Delhi or Mumbai was uh, in a way curated by Hanif, uh, and they've transformed the public spaces and made art more trans uh, accessible to the general public. Uh, and his project, Hand Painted Type, uh, which you can access on um, handpaintedtype.com, attempts to conserve and archive uh, vernacular street typography of India. So I highly recommend that you check that out as well. Um, and Anif, it's so nice to have you here. I'm see, like Elsa said, I think both I and uh, Elsa saw you right before the lockdown when the first case of COVID arrived in Delhi. So, how are you doing in the last six months? Yeah, thank you, uh, Pratima and Elsa, for having me here. Um, it's, I mean, the world has uh, definitely changed a lot since uh, since we met. Uh, and uh, just, I'm going to like uh, talk about the work which Start India Foundation does. Uh, and uh, I am one of the co-founders. We are five co-founders. That's Arjun Bell, Tanish Thomas, Julia Ambroji, and Akshat Noriel, and with me. And so we kind of like five people. We all handle different responsibilities uh, at the foundation. And our sole aim of the foundation is to actually. Uh, have more art on the street by kind of establishing art districts in India, which we have learned over the years. So I will take you guys through uh, to some of the work which we have done in the last few years. Yeah, so. Yeah, please go ahead. And I want to say in your mission, honey, you uh, said that you wanted to make art more accessible to the larger public audience in India. So we really want to see more uh, examples and visuals of what you guys have achieved at Street Art. And I've been a big fan of your work. So I've sure. just uh, your uh, slides up. So please go ahead. Sure. Uh, so the foundation is like a non-profit foundation, which uh, is kind of like working in public spaces. And over the years, we kind of like six years, we have worked in 10 cities. We have done 21 festivals, six exhibitions. We worked with 326 artists. And we kind of like painted 375 walls uh, just in numbers. And these are some of the categories which we work in, which is art districts, experiential exhibitions, landmark projects, installations, hand-painted type, art and transit city projects, and, and uh, high court. Uh, so, this is actually uh, some of the highlights of like some of the art districts which we have been working in uh, uh, India. And so Lodi is in Delhi, Makta is in Hyderabad, Mahim is in Mumbai, Panjima district in Goa, Kanagi in Chennai, and Ukadam is the newest art district in Coimbatore. Uh, so I can like obviously uh, take you to the whole presentation, but Pratima, if you have any specific questions, then I can possibly also. Uh, talk about those projects uh, in particular. 
Hanif, let's go through the YouTube and uh, yeah. YouTube. So as, you're, as you're going through those, as you're going through those images, yeah. Hanif, it would be nice to explain to us uh, why do you think that this public art is important and uh, why it's important for the public to also express themselves, whether it is on uh, culture, on politics, on um, you know issues that matter. Yeah. So I mean, uh, so can let's just start with Lodi as an example, which is actually uh, you know a colony of CPWD where you know uh, all the facades. So this is like one of the facade. This one particular is painted by Samir Kulavur from Mumbai. But uh, all the facades of the colony are kind of like same. This colony is in the middle of Delhi. Uh, and before we started work on it, it was just like normal walls with like vandalism all over with like posters, political posters stuck over it, paint kind of like fading over. The Even the, the cleanliness point of view wasn't like as good as what it is today. Uh, and we kind of like, and this colony has these kind of like almost to 100 facade like this. And when we saw the colony, we thought it would be really nice to kind of like, you know, convert this colony into an art district. And that's how we kind of like started working in this colony since 2015. Uh, and then over the years, we kind of like uh, continue to work on it. Even today, as we speak, there is an artist uh, from Delhi called Zero, who's actually working on the wall uh, in, in Lodi colony right now. So so there's actually, so we have been kind of like working in this colony uh, for quite some time. So I, I just have some highlights of the, uh, you know, of the space. So this is how the whole colony looks like. So far we have 56 artworks uh, in total. In the, in the colony when it would take almost a couple of hours to walk through the whole space. Uh, it's almost like a two kilometer by two kilometer of square radius uh, with ample amount of like pedestrian friendly spaces, uh, good enough like, you know, a very quiet space in Delhi, which is very hard to find. That too, also you are in the like Lutian's Delhi. So, so that's so. This is the map of Rudi Art District. Uh, this is uh, one of my collaboration with an Australian artist called Georgia Hill. Uh, and Georgia uh, kind of like works on. Uh, also, Georgia works with text. I also works with text and typography. And uh, when we were both talking about it, we came to a conclusion that like you know she wanted to say that this must be the place like you know where, where people kind of like try to settle down and in response to that i have kind of like a, a very uh, abstract uh, hindi which says yaha so you can see like a yo yo and there's a little bit of ho you can see while behind it she kind of like goes through which says must so it's like m u s t so it's kind of like a very uh, abstract version but it's like this must be the place and like here it is so uh this is uh adele Renaud. she's like she kind of like works with pigeons as like as her subject and pigeons are kind of like being more of an urban animal as such they kind of like always part of her life and she kind of like works with these enlarged version of uh pigeons this is another, this is like one of my favorite uh, uh, piece from uh, uh, from the colony, which is uh, done by Burundo. Burundo is a Spanish artist. Uh, and he's kind of, this piece is kind of like in front of a maternity home. Uh, and he's kind of like, the name of this piece is called Passage of Life. And it's kind of like trying to show this perspective through the, you know, through the wall where there's like a small little boat, which is on a journey. It's kind of like talking about, you know, how we come into the world and kind of like very much abstract uh, but still have like a lot of meaning behind it this is another uh, favorite from an indian artist called ink russian me is a harshwardhan kadam from pune uh, and this is based on uh, the name of this piece is called vishwarupa 
it's like when the krishna opened his mouth and kind of like showed the world you know in his mouth and kind of like so he, this is harshvardhan's version of like showing different characteristics coming out from you know uh showing showing from the mouth and it's kind of like the whole universe which kind of like you know different creatures and everyone kind of like opens up so this is uh, this is him this is another piece by never crew which is like swiss artist uh and this is uh, their version of it this is aaron lee hill from uh, canada now lives in new york uh so that's that's uh, him and the guy in the middle his name is deepak and deepak actually lives in the same lane behind it so uh while I, the reason why i'm kind of like mentioning deepak is because deepak is probably like uh 15 year old and for the last 5 6 years we have kind of like known deepak and seen a change in him change in him uh towards the art and what he wants what he aspires to be um uh, because the whole uh, colony what it was before and what it's after has kind of like made a huge difference and now deepak wants to be an artist and he's kind of like uh, it's not only deepak but there are hundreds of kids in the colony who have started started looking at art in a very different uh, perspective and much larger than life than you normally see and and that's the kind of like impact which we want to kind of like have on the next generation where you know uh, we kind of like uh, opening up our imagination to uh, at a different scale like you know i wish that when i was a kid i would probably like you know grown up in a colony like this where it was kind of like full of painting and like you know a lot of energy and a lot of different people come into it and the whole dynamics of the colony have definitely uh, changed over the years while we kind of like work with international artists we also work with some of the traditional artists so this is a work by uh, mahendra pawar who kind of like specializes comes from shekhawati region in rajasthan and they have this shekhawati painting so this kind of like uh, one of the exploration of that uh, there's a mexican artist called senkoi senkoi is also like so the tree in the middle uh has kind of like now grown much bigger than you know when this was painted 4 years ago uh but at the same time the tree actually also changes uh with seasons and and that's the whole uh, point is about like kind of having uh, a, a piece which also like changes with the uh, season so that's kind of like you know from delhi and then uh, we going to hyderabad but before we move to hyderabad we can actually uh come back to pratima and maybe you know uh, have some conversation if if needed so uh, honey if i want to ask you first about uh, of this project and why it is so important to make public art more accessible uh, why is that crucial to the agenda of a thriving productive city uh i think uh, it it adds uh, a layer of positivity in the city mm-hmm. where, yes uh, especially i think in this post covid times when you know people are kind of like a bit scared of coming out in the public space and we think uh, having an art uh, eases out the stress of being in a city especially our cities how they have how they have been built and how uh, it's been kind of like you know the the development of the city has mm-hmm. really gone into uh, kind of like at, at at a speed where there isn't any room left for you know uh, so it's kind of like we're having an art softens a little bit it kind of like also makes our cities more welcoming and more uh, yeah i think i would say like more positivity it kind of like definitely brings more positivity which is very much needed right now yeah you know you know many years ago i was in philadelphia for a few yeah. uh, few months <clears throat> and philadelphia has a lot of street art and huge uh, you know uh, paintings on the sides of buildings and uh um, mainly it was started because they had a very high rate of um juvenile delinquency and this was a way to engage 
what they call returning citizens into um, a skill that they can use as well as to integrate them back into society after they've spent some time in prison. And what they found was not only did this art program uh, create a sense of community, a sense of pride, but it did not uh, lead to vandalism. So this the, this art was preserved because even the community recognized that they could not deface those walls, they could not deface those paintings. And what I found um, very uh, fascinating was that these this art, um, which was ve which is very well documented, I think they have more than twenty five hundred pieces now. Um, it either captures a moment in time or it captures the history of that place, or it honors one of the citizens of that uh, city. And um, it's really, really a beautiful way to, um, to, you know, just document in a live manner, the history, the culture of a place. But during winter, when it is dull and dreary, and you suddenly come up, uh, you know, with against one of these paintings and it just brightens up the mood it bright it changes the whole atmosphere altogether and looking at your you know your art um i mean your organization's art on these buildings is just uh, reminding me and transporting me to philadelphia so i just wanted to yeah, up. yeah that's, that's very interesting uh, because the whole uh, scene i would say started from Philadelphia mural arts program, which kind of like started in 80s. Uh, and the program has been kind of like continued to grow since then. And that's the reason why they have these, you know, uh, 2,500 artworks now in Philadelphia. I do have, uh, actually, as we speak, I have in the, in the lockdown, Philadelphia opened up, uh, opened up a, a public, art show and i do have work in the, in the public art show at the navy yard which is actually currently on and it's going to be on, uh, it's going to be on till end of this year so philadelphia is definitely one of the cities uh, which is heavily kind of investing the city in itself understands really well about like what it means in investing in public art so like I mean, there's no other city. I mean, before we, before the lockdown, I had like few more exhibitions planned in different parts of the world. While well, none of that none of that worked out, but Philadelphia definitely made an effort to make sure that you know this public art installation comes alive even in the middle of pandemic. So that's that's the spirit of the city. So. I think we, it's time to move to uh, move from Philadelphia to Hyderabad once again, and I'm gonna like take you through uh, what's happening in Hyderabad. So Hyderabad has this place called Makta Art District. Makta is a small little neighborhood on the banks of uh, Hussein Sagar Lake. Uh, this is the Necklace Road. Necklace Road is kind of like very much uh, popular. It's the lake surrounding the boundary. Uh, and the, there's a place called People's Plaza, and opposite that, there is a, a small little neighborhood called Makta. This is how kind of like Makta is kind of like an urban, urban village, which most of the Indian cities are kind of experiencing. And see how that village is kind of like being taken over by the city around. And so Makta is kind of like one of the examples. Of that, Makta is kind of like predominantly uh, Muslim population. So when it comes to that, we're also trying to like not portray uh, many portraits as such, but kind of like get into more of an abstract kind of like art and seeing that if there's a way in which we can add that. Even though we have made like, you know, few uh, uh, figurative works, but these are kind of like more on the base, they are uh, uh, more on the abstract side of it. This is another one by Du and Khatra, very popular back in Makta. Uh, so that's uh, so that's the neighborhood which we actually uh, changed, and again there is a small little walk in the neighborhood which one can actually go around. Uh, and what we have also done is kind of like you know because the neighborhood is so uh, congested and you probably like you know if somebody's new may get lost, so we actually made streets in Makta, uh, which is. Uh, 
kind of made named with color so we kind of like have a green street and yellow street and blue street and uh, to navigate through and what i am just presenting is just the highlights of it while there are actually around 39 to 40 works of art within the within the same space again by artists from india and all different uh, kinds and these colors which you see are actually those streets which i'm talking about so there's a pink street and there is like yellow and green and you know so this is how we also navigate through makta and it is really also changed makta's uh, uh, dynamics inside uh, similarly on the other uh, example we have mahin east art district which is actually a one end of dharavi we could have also named this district dharavi but we kind of like tend to like not uh, just highlight the word dharavi dharavi which is kind of like already like you know uh, uh, been used by many different organizations but we wanted to kind of like uh, have a uh, give a dharavi a different identity in itself and there is no mahim east as a place but we kind of like named it as a mahim east and now if you google mahim east you will you that colony so so that's also the point uh so somebody who's like familiar with with mumbai uh, on one side there is a tulsi by road there's a mahim station and you cross you cross the mahim station and you come into this uh, place called shahunagar which is actually uh, our art district so I'm gonna. So Chaunagar is again like a, a, a community living colony, and these are some of the works. This one is by Miles Stolen. Uh, Miles Stolen is an artist based in California. This is by Milo from from Italy. Uh, this is from Ella and Petra from France. They have actually also worked on uh, some of the rooftops and and surfaces. This is Young Jarus from Canada. Uh, uh, this is like my favorite from Australian artist called Edo Van Helton. Uh, these are like B-boys of Dharavi. Uh, and as you can see, like how, you know, the how these boys are actually merging in the landscape. And like you know, at one point, you may not like notice, but then you see these two figures emerging from, you know, uh, from the wall. And these are actually local boys who, who, lives, in, who lives around. So kind of like also making local people uh, also heroes, you know, kind of like having local heroes. Young kids kind of give the motivation of different kind. This is Sajid Wajid, uh, again, artist based in Bombay. Uh, then we're going to move on to Panjim Art District in Goa. Uh, but uh, at this point, maybe we can just come back to uh, some questions again. I mean, how do you pick your neighborhoods? Uh, it's very interesting. So that's a good question, actually. Uh, when initially we started, we did uh, work in the urban village of uh, Hoskas and Shahpurjat and Kirki and in Hyderabad, uh, sorry, in Delhi. What we saw, especially in Hoskas and uh, Hoskas and Shahpurjat, that there is a uh, some kind of gentrification started to happen. Where the suddenly place became hip and cool, and they kind of like more and more people started coming in. Uh, then the fashion designers started coming in there, and then they kind of like named the street called Gora Lane, and they kind of like you know suddenly the real estate prices were kind of like changing pretty much uh, very quickly. Uh, and we saw that like gentrification, which street art and gentrification also have a very uh, um, kind of like goes hand in hand there are companies in america who use street art to kind of like gentrify places and then kind of like you know the prices go up and it really changes the whole scenario in india we do not want to happen yeah, we do not want to uh, you know go go that route where art creates some kind of uh, instability or kind of like especially to the residents who, who's been living there so we decided to work with only government uh, spaces mostly whenever we're working on a format of art district we thought it would be good 
to not work in a private space but work in a government uh, owned spaces which are kind of gentrification free where there is we are not our art is not definitely be part of the um, our art is definitely not be part of the you know uh, helping anyone in uh, any private company in person that way so so yeah working with government is what the answer to it uh, and when you uh, do the designs you know like finalize the designs that go up on the buildings do you engage the community in the conceptualization of the design uh, sorry can you repeat the your question again so you work with government on the spaces right do you yeah. also work with the government or the local communities on the conceptualization of the design uh it depends where the artist comes in to and where the artist comes in and and uh, spend some time with the with the local people with the locality understand what's the you know what's the surrounding finds their own story so there is kind of like an indirect participation but there is not really a definite participation of the uh, local thing especially when it comes to art for the artist uh, while we do run a, a campaign called donate a wall uh, where we work with asian paint and ask like we go to different states and ask people to donate the wall so that when when someone donates the wall uh, they also have a say on on what it should be how it should be so so there is a different kind of a, you know a campaign which we do to uh, to make it make it happen but when it comes to art districts artists are the ones who fix the call i also wanted to tell you that you know a lot of the artwork is bringing that neighborhood uh, alive and i i want to you know ask you about how artists are uh, engaging with what local traditions are are there any civic messages that are kind of integrated uh, in some of these artworks can you give us some examples uh civic message to be precise uh, how do i say mm. I mean, we try. Letting... Example, I know, I know, Hanif. In your own work, uh, you have in the past uh, tried to integrate, you know, social messages, better civic education messages. Uh, are there examples that you'd like to share with us? Um, Actually, you know, we try and not do that uh, for the civic messages and social messages, especially. I mean, in, in a very direct way, like mm -hmm. having said that, like stop pollution. Right. is not going to really help uh, stopping any kind of pollution maybe mm -hmm. it could serve as a reminder and that's how uh, all these public walls uh, started with you know having a having a public message which says that don't do this and do do this and do that and what not and all that so we definitely don't have any kind of direct messages but at the same time we artists have uh, uh, worked in the past in such a way that where there is a way in which we there is a subtle way of saying it and you know when someone gets it like just as an example when when you go and paint a wall in a, in a community and paint it really nice and what happens is that it kind of like puts pressure on the system on the government on the municipal corporation to keep up that pace because that initially before that the place was just a normal place but then now once it becomes artistic there are people who's coming in there people who are shooting people are posting it on online and suddenly it puts the pressure on the municipal corporation to make sure the space is clean and neat and all that so there is a way in which it it helps indirectly uh, but we will not kind of like go and say it like clearly so for example there's an artist called andreko who kind of like works on uh, water conservation and you know uh, topics of global uh, pollution and uh, all different kind of uh, social subjects so he has a mural in lodi 
uh, which, which talks about you know the pollution level in Yamuna and what's happening and whatever, but it, it, it does not directly say that save Yamuna or do this or do that. You know, it just kind of like doesn't uh, help that way. The same way there's another artist called David Littner from Austria who's kind of like made another mural which talks about uh, uh, which talks about pollution and uh, especially like you know how the plastic and how you know the plastic has been kind of like changing our society but there is always a very subtle way of uh, saying the same thing mm -hmm. should you want to show us more images from the other art districts sure so i'm going to take you to to goa now it's called panjim art district Panjim, uh, the Panjim Art District is uh, in collaboration with Serendipity Arts Festival, and actually, it's a a, a project from Serendipity uh, Arts Festival, which happens in Goa every year. This year, the festival is not happening physically in Goa, but it's happening virtually, online. Uh, but uh, so I've been fortunate enough to work on the uh, work working with Serendipity since the inception of it, and the first year I participated as an artist. Uh, which was curated by Ria Skomu, and then the year later, uh, we kind of like worked with Start to uh, make the change, uh, kind of like having an art in in Panjim. So this is Du and Katra, starting from uh, you know uh, they made these uh, woven lady on a on a facade. Mm -hmm. After this, they actually repainted the whole space, and they have kept they have kept the the mural alive. And painted everything else really nicely, so it kind of like you know uh, uh, really changed uh, changed the whole surface that way. So this is my project with uh, uh, another Goan auntie. Uh, it's called Auntie Maria, and we made these uh, big cutouts of the Goan personalities and put it up at at different uh, spaces. So there were like six cutouts at at that year. I, I just have like one because I'm just kind of like uh, showing. Uh, just the highlights of it. So this is um, Guido Van Helton again. This is in, in Panjim parking lot. This is Fintan Magi from Australia. Uh, this is Miles Stolen. Uh, this is Okuda, a very colorful Spanish artist, very popular known artist. This is Daku, kind of like works with shadows. Uh, we also had like a small little residency. Uh, Around it, these are like these abandoned shops uh, on the uh, in Goa, where there is like a pato on one side, and there's a uh, uh, so these shops are kind of like abandoned at one point, and then we uh, was, so we kind of like worked on on it uh, in such a way that uh, we kind of made a small little art walk in there. Uh, apart from that, we also did uh, we also did change some signage of the uh, of the shops, which is particularly like Goa is kind of like known for these wooden types, and we mm -hmm. replaced some of the flex signs with actual wooden signs. So we also like trying to uh, you know, uh, make, kind of give a little heritage. Uh, uh, Touch to the, to the city. Good, good signs are beautiful. Yeah, so it's kind of like these signs look like they are from the past, but we actually uh, made it uh, pretty much new. And that brings us to uh, Kanagi Art District, which is in Chennai. We actually started there in February 2020, which is not very long ago. Uh, and this is with Chennai Municipal Corporation. Kanagi is our latest and uh, art district. It's again uh, a municipal, municipally owned neighborhood uh, with, mid, with the low medium class uh, people living in there. This is by uh, this, this artwork by Kashmira Sarore from Bangalore, and this is art, Chennai based artist called Akil, uh, young artist from, from Chennai with a lot of potential. And he just kind of like he painted this. So, this is Ushin Siva. Again, she's like has a you know. Tamil roots. Uh, she is now in Goa. This is Antonio Marest. This is David Littner. Um, so, and yeah, so we continue to paint in uh, in Chennai as well. 
and you can see like how you know art has kind of like added impact in in this whole environment so uh, we will be working focusing more on it while we were working in chennai we also started working in coimbatore it's called ukkadam art district it's in ukkadam this is uh, a local artist called jiva and his collaboration with munir bukhari this is amitabh kumar from bangalore uh, this is shifumi a french artist from cambodia uh, now and with this kind of like uh, inspiration was from uh, mehndi and like the henna and like the intricate indian design and it's kind of like done a great job of the space so yeah so that's kind of like uh, uh, more or less work which we have been doing uh, in in the domain of art district so far so honey you had earlier mentioned that you work with government um, and you know you use their property to mainly showcase this art and in a way once they see the result it puts pressure on them yeah. to maintain it so have you, have you seen other unintended consequences of your work as well with the community or with the government because we are talking about inclusive cities and you know most of our cities like mahim east for example it's not an aspirational neighborhood but by putting your art there you've now created yeah. a tourist spot you know and not only that those people will feel so proud and because it's by the railway tracks you have millions looking at it all the time you know when they are sitting in the train going yes. past so yeah so can you share a little more about you know what are the positive effects of art in city i mean uh, there isn't any uh, uh, you know one line answer to this question because you know these uh, effects are something which we do need some time to see we do need to like uh, the more art we have the more positivity we have on the street and the more like you know it also like for example i'm just giving you an example of chennai where we we did the project just before the covid came in when covid struck in in chennai and when the municipal corporation was fighting for it the first area where they could like contain covid was kannagi and the reason why they could do that was because we did the project our volunteers have gone door to door speaking to people having this dialogue where people are speaking to people and they kind of like what we did is we built a sense of community which was not existing before and because we made the sense of community and everybody knows everybody kind of situation it really changed and it really helped the municipal corporation to control the situation of covid which we never thought in our like planning that oh this will help government do this but but it did happen so similarly uh, there are many things which we still even don't know today that you know what kind of impact it has been having in people but it's definitely whatever the impact it's definitely more on the positive side than of than on the negative side i also want to ask you neef about your uh, own project the hand painted type which attempts to yeah. preserve and archive vernacular street typography of india and we saw examples of it uh, with the work that you did in uh, with the wooden type typography yeah. sign tell us a little bit more about it and why it's you know why it's so kind of important to you so i mean it's more than me it's kind of like it's also part of our uh, 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 visual culture mm -hmm. india as a country and like you know the kind of tradition we have of hand painted type and there is like you know there is a generation of sign painters who's been like earning their living on it at the same time it is a very much part of the landscape which we live in especially the urban landscape which we live in uh what makes it india is also the signages 
and also this colors and the sensibility of these colors and and also the regional uh, languages how they have been used how they have been portrayed versus of a sign which is made on computer which then if you are talking about coca cola then coca cola is going to be same here and coca cola is going to be same across the world no matter wherever you go you kind of like in the process of making the whole world look same especially when you are walking in the malls no matter whatever the mall it is you can be anywhere in the world and all the brands around you are going to be same brands you know you're going to be have like you, you can be anywhere in the world there is no difference yeah what makes the difference when you are on the street especially on indian streets all these signages and mm -hmm. somewhere we need to kind of like have a system to at least archive document and kind of like also keep it for the next generation to see that hey look this is how our streets look like before at one point uh so kind of like adding into this i uh we do we did a project uh, in amritsar uh which which was actually uh, replacing these uh, uh shop signs and we kind of like uh, did a very focused like you know uh, uh, uh version of it where we we replaced these uh, uh we taken a street in amritsar and there were 150 shops in the street we removed all the we made the street flex free and we installed uh we we uh, got the local sign painters we made the signs and we put the put the signs on the street now the whole street looks completely different clutter free very much like you know uh, uh, kind of like we tried and bring back the heritage within that thing so so that's uh that's the kind of power you know, and the difference which uh it definitely has so yeah one thing at a time we're trying to uh, we, we try to do that do you want to have images of that project honey i'm trying i'm i'm trying to i'm trying to uh, find find some images so just give me a moment Actually, base painting and signages are so crucial to urban design and the visual culture. And you're mm. right; like, to forget that historically we had these kind of very, you know, with languages and different signs in our cities. Even if you now go to the old neighborhoods of our cities, you'll see some of those remnants, and that gave it the authentic culture and uh, uh, identity. Exactly. so uh, i'm I, i'm not able to find it on my this computer i'm actually not in my studio and i'm actually traveling so uh, hence i don't have it handy but i would have otherwise showed it for sure <laughs> honey if we have a question from somebody who has been watching the show and so, gayatri she says how i would i would like to be part start of india as i am an artist so please can you share an email yeah. can i so, so gayatri uh, yeah thanks for your question uh, i would like to i mean so there are like you know a lo lot of uh, artists who would say that i would like to be part of start india and you would like to paint a wall please uh, give us a wall to paint uh, so i like when i started painting walls i never went and asked for a wall from anyone uh, i just went and painted uh, and there was uh, uh, i did not take any permission from anyone kind of like let's say it's more on the vandalism side of it but i did <laughs> vandalism uh, and that vandalism kind of like took me to where i am today uh, but the point i'm trying to make is that the streets are free the streets are public and when i'm saying it's public we are also public and we have a right on it and we have like you know uh, and it is our spaces if you are going and seeing something and if you are like on a road if you are using that road that's your road that's that's your space that's your wall and you do not i mean you and the whole point is to reclaim it and is to go out and do it 
and not wait for someone to give you the permission and give you this pedestal to saying that please come and paint is to like mm. just go out and do it not like mm. you know wait for anyone to invite you to say that please come and do you know be part of it uh, all the artists which we work with are the artists have always born out of like their own uh, will to work on the street not like that somebody's invited them to paint it and that's why they are painting it we have we have in we are inviting because these people are painting it already on the street without anyone inviting anyone and that mm. is the point i'm trying to make that please go out gayatri please go out and paint and send us some pictures and we will be happy to have you in our next festival but before that you have to and do something and if i want to ask you about um, you know street artists who have been activists i mean the i mean the one that we all may have heard in popular culture is banksy who's uh, I mean, we have our own banksy in mumbai called tyler uh huh you guys and know you, of tyler yes so tell us more about the subculture of public art which um, you know pushes us to think banksy about is the, banksy is the introduction to like street art to like many people and you know people mm -hmm. actually refer to banksy and especially the journalist the journalist uh, always like you know compares or starts their question with banksy because i mean first thing they read is banksy <laughs> so it's definitely an introduction to to this world which is great because it's like he's like a picasso of this moment i would call it you know uh so uh while he's leading it from front uh we are uh, uh, what he's doing is definitely having an influence of artists across the world so there are artists from all over the world who are kind of like so there is a so tyler is india's banksy then there is like banksy of this country banksy of that country and the banksy of like all kind of countries so uh so is that the is, code uh, Yeah, type. How do you spell that? Type. Tyler. Tyler. T Y T Y L E R. Tyler Street Art. Tyler. Yeah, and you can check out. You know, you can check out the work he's been doing. And I think, yeah, and that's kind of like hardcore activism out there. It's also like criticizing the government, which has become very, very difficult for artists to criticize mm -hmm. because his identity is secret. He can still go out and criticize. So, so. so there is also that anonymity which is also being in play and uh, and that's uh, that's what's happening you are right so, i think a lot of artists um, uh, yeah so I'll, street art definitely have that uh, thing uh, no, this can really uh, push us to question what's not right in the society and no sure. and, and that's why uh instagram page uh yes. and i remember there was this whole campaign in uh, kerala as well about guess who during the bnr guess who guess who is uh, yeah guess who kind of like got activated in uh, uh, two binales before which was i think in 2014 or 6 14 or 16 uh no, not sure but guess who is again like another popular artist and has been kind of like you know uh, So imagine like when guess who kind of like got into binale people were talking about guess who then the binale while there's a whole big production and like huge support and everything is going on guess who kind of like equally got uh, kind of like equal amount of pr uh, which uh, binale got at that point and that's also the power of street we have a question from Naveen Rai here who's saying that how can we collaborate and execute such projects uh in in sikkim so uh, navin is uh, an architect in urban planner navin uh, i can uh, you can take my details from pratima or you can kind of like mail mail to us at like team at startindia.org i'm going to like uh, put an email id out there so that uh, everyone who's got any questions or something can definitely uh, send us an uh, send us an email Hanif, I'll share your uh, website details with them and your contact, so they yeah, can get. Unfortunately, both our website is not working 
and you know we are really uh, really bad at like doing work online so uh, i'm just uh, uh, i've just put in an email id which if anyone's got any questions please uh, do send us an email and we will definitely get in, get in touch yeah. so i see more culture like uh, tatla here in india to question what's not right to um, you know question the status quo provoke us as a community oh well, yes why not so is uh, tell us about examples like this around the country who should we watch out for in terms of new artists who are doing this i said tyler street art there is guess who uh these i mean these are two kind of like uh, secretive artists which uh, i would say uh, and then rest is kind of like pretty much public actually and uh, and as at, at start india as well when we keep like uh, introducing new artists to uh, to india and like you know and people are going kind to of like open to see and explore their work and that's also like we are trying to do we are trying to become a platform through which we can kind of like you know also support new artists and new ideas on the street elsa any comments or questions this is such a great idea to make change happen and provoke the community to you yes. know yes it's been absolutely fascinating and i am uh, so thrilled that we had you back <laughs> to share with us i know when we met in delhi you shared yours anpu shared hers and i noticed in goa there was one with anpu and i was wondering if it was the same um yeah. they were just beautiful and i think uh, you know our cities are so um, dull and dirty i street art like this can bring a sense of joy a sense of pride a, a bit of color um i know there's a lot being done on bandra west as well and uh, even my village in goa saligao has these huge murals uh, which honor yeah. some of the famous residents over there so we can do so much with art you know honoring people remembering our history remembering our culture things like that and our, our festivals are all very colorful but our cities yeah. are so polluted that the suit you know um, lines up all the buildings and everything else making them so dirty and uh, you just don't yeah. see that sense of joy but a splash of color through this art form really lifts your spirits and you know just changes your mood so i wish you all the luck and i hope you are in every city in every suburb and there are many more artists you don't have to necessarily do it yourself we are a subcontinent but there can be more artists who get recognized and more children and more young people take to art you know to yeah. brighten up our city exactly yeah. that's that's the mission so i think it was great talking to you guys thank you so much for having me and uh, yeah i look forward to more collaborations in in uh, in future uh no, I, this was such a fascinating con conversation honey and thank you, uh, thank you. Thank you I, everyone watching watching i really don't know how many people are there who is watching share, yes but i just want to say honey if um, i've always been a big fan of you and i know when you first came to mumbai we collaborated with you and it was such yes. That's the funniest thing that we did as part of our place campaign yes. in Mumbai, and in Mumbai. Uh, you know we Seven. need uh, more of you. So thank you for joining you. this conversation. I'm going to send you the link to the video, and uh, we've shared our contacts with the community that's been watching. And uh, yeah, this has been a fascinating thank discussion. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank like you. my 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 pranam, like COVID pranam. <laughs> And right. Naveen Rai ends with a line which is really apt. He says, "More than obsessive with the acts like that of Banki, I believe Hanif's foundation is giving character to the city, to the street. It's like creating city with memory." So on that note, thank yes. you everyone thank for you joining. So thank you so much. Bye. 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 See you soon.